In this digital age, and especially because of the COVID-19 pandemic, you have got to know how to live stream your music. Live streaming is a very important part of making your music heard all over the world. And what's more, today our guest Fedor Ospensky will share with us what you need to know for the best live, extreme, live streaming experience that you will have. Are you ready? Let's get started. Hello and welcome to the show. Before we introduce our guest, I want to tell you all about what we're doing. And for those who are new to this show, welcome. Thank you for joining us. Um, I want to tell you a little bit about our competition, the Sound Espresivo Global Competition. And our mission is to empower musicians uh, for the future. And our broadcasts uh, are designed to do that, help you to meet our community, to meet our judges, meet our fellow contestants from last year, um, to meet people who give away the prizes and... Just let me tell you about, about this um, competition itself because it's really, really unique and there are five important aspects that you need to know um, in order to uh, apply and also to, to know about us. So first of all, there are no time limits in the semifinals and finals of our competition, which means that you can program longer works, you can program shorter works, you can make a, a recital program. It really allows you the freedom to program what you want. And speaking of programming, the second important aspect is that we have no repertoire restrictions. A lot of competitions may have or oh, you must play some etude or you must play a certain Bach prelude and fugue or something of that sort. No, we have no restrictions. We want you to be able to express yourself in the manner which you see best fit. The third thing which I actually think is the best thing about this competition is that there is immediate feedback from our jury members. And what does that mean? That means that as soon as you've played live, you come back on your seat and talk to the jury members right after. And they'll give you their constructive um, suggestions, they'll give you their feedback, and they'll affirm some of the things you've done. And what's more, you get their applause as well, which is something really unique um, to this competition. The fourth thing is that our prizes have a total value of over $100,000 US. And we don't give any way, away any cash prizes, but what we do instead is we give performance opportunities, we give management, we give career coaching, website design, uh, agents um, who teach you how to be your own agent. All of these add up to over $100,000 in prizes. We also give away scholarships to attend festivals, attend masterclasses. And these are really valuable experiences and opportunities to connect, to collaborate, collaborate with other musicians. And it's extremely valuable. The fifth thing is that our competition is completely live broadcasted, which means that apart from a video recording that you could send in the preliminary audition, everything is live, just like in a real live in-person competition. We'll set up all the equipment and help you with that before the show. And as soon as you go on, all you have to do is play in the comfort of maybe your living room, and which is what I did last year. And so if you know anybody of you yourself are somebody who's interested in this, please check out our website um, below. There's a lot more rules and regulations available there, but also there's the application form. So fill it in and give us a try. Yeah, I think you'll really enjoy uh, this and get a lot out of this competition. So without further ado, let's introduce our guest for today, Fyodor Ospensky. Um, who is a co-founder of Virtual Concert Halls and the Sound Espresivo Global Competition. So Fyodor is, a, as I said, the co-founder of Virtual Concert Halls and the Sound Espresivo Global Competition. He's on the team of directors, producers and visionaries who has helped to make this happen last year and is helping to make this happen again this year. He is a violinist who has studied at the Juilliard School, the National Symphony Orchestra Fellowship Program and privately with Aaron Roseanne. He has played with incredible musicians like Lauren Mazel as part of the first violin section of the Castleton Festival Orchestra. 
Fyodor has also trained as a conductor, arranger, composer, transcriber, and promoter of classical music. For his playing, he has won many uh, prizes at competitions all over the world, including the Fur Fairfax Symphony Young Artist Competition. And teaching is also something Fedor is very passionate about. He's developed a system of uh, individual plans, assignments that help students achieve their goals. And to me, what makes Fyodor really admirable is that he's willing to have tried everything. He's uh, empowered not only himself, but also others in his goal. And so he continues to work on these facets. So welcome to the show. Thank you so much for being on. Thanks for that uh, very enhanced introduction, Chris. Appreciate it. <laughs> it's true. It's on, it's on your site. So I'm only uh, copying and pasting what you've written, kind of. Uh, so can you share with us your experience with uh, virtual concert halls and with live streaming performances? Uh, what have you learned from these experiences live streaming your music? Um, I think it's just uh, such a empowering, I guess, experience uh, to see um, live streaming be so um, prominent and so many people get interested in being part of it. And it just really, I think, unites the community around music, around live performance, around talking about music and all of those things uh, that seem to have kind of uh, become, uh, people were worried that it was going to become less uh, pr less present because of the pandemic and I think that uh, we've been able to really bring back that uh, that energy uh, that people have and really highlight the musicians that are maybe still stuck at home but they're still able to express themselves and uh, do all kinds of uh, programs and uh, talk about music it's really fun well, what I also like about live streaming is you know with the rise of twitch you know which is a sort of a, a game usually gamers use it to stream of what they're doing on uh, on yeah. the games and what happens also is there's, there's sort of a currency and a market involved where if you're marketable you're actually able to get a lot of um, donations as you are performing and so a lot of musicians actually have moved to twitch as well to stream the performances and potentially get donations and people fueling them so which which enables, I think, um, more than just what YouTube or Facebook Lite has to offer, um, which is just the performance itself and it's free, but you're actually able to get donations for it. What are your thoughts on, on that? I mean, uh, Twitch definitely has a lot of success. Um, I think it definitely gives a lot of uh, uh, options for people to be able to stream on their own. And I, a lot of younger generation people are very, very involved in the streaming world there's TikTok as well where you you do little bit sized videos and that's you know and you still get to communicate with your audience and you still get to express yourself and any a lot of platforms exist out there for this kind of purpose and i think that being able to also see a future of uh, successfully being um in the entertainment business with a lot of avenues for unique expression i think is, is great um yeah, there are definitely musicians who are on uh, Twitch, and there are musicians uh, here as well. That, uh, and we do stream a lot to Facebook, and I think there's a big community of musicians and lots of groups that uh, unite musicians around different focuses and composers or different types of uh, performers. Um, that's really fun as well. Um, so yeah, it's, it's definitely a very active world out there on the virtual stage, and I think that's why it's so important to know um, how to live stream and how that kind of thing works so you can join in on this uh, kind of thing. Absolutely. I think also with live streaming, especially on Twitch or uh, if you're able to develop a YouTube channel of yourself, what happens is that you're actually able to develop a fan base and they're actually able to interact with you. You know, with a meet and greet, you know, VIP, you feel like it's only the, you know, the very special people who get to meet the artists backstage. But with uh, live streaming, especially with Twitch, you're able to communicate and interact with the artists just by chatting and leaving comments, etc. I think it's a more intimate way to interact with artists. Oh yeah, absolutely. I think like one of the almost drawbacks of live performance uh, in person is that you're you're stuck seeing the performance and a lot of the times the performer who may have been the soloist, for example, uh, is going to go backstage and then they're going to either immediately leave or they're going to only see a couple of their, you know, close and personal friends and backstage and then they're just going to, uh, you know, uh, disappear and you're not going to be able to catch a moment to talk to them or anything like that whereas live streaming is kind of I think it's promoting an environment where there's no no like weird power almost dynamic of like oh there's the performer and they're unachievable and you can't even talk to them and they're like something to I don't know not worship but something to kind of like look up to and you can't really get to have a conversation with them on a level, you know, like they're another person yeah. or something. And I think that Absolutely. it kind of humanizes, uh, streaming definitely humanizes a lot of 
uh, maybe idols or other people like that. And it just creates the culture that we're all people and we're all just here to, uh, you know, find a way to express ourselves. And the musicians are just much more, uh, their profession is kind of tied to emotional expression and finding a way to connect with you emotionally through a venue, uh, uh, a, a form of like music or something. Um, and I think that's really cool. And speaking of that, I think what's really cool is is that uh, there's there's two things. Um, the first of all, what I really admired when I first got into music was um, there was a documentary made with uh, Daniel Barenboim, Jacqueline Dupre, um, mm -hmm. Pinkus uh, Zuckerman, and Istak Perlman and Zuma Meta, where they performed the Shrout, the Schubert Trout Quintet. And there's like there's a performance, Amazing obviously, <laughs> right? Right. <laughs> I mean, you can't get any <laughs> much better than that um, together. And but also you see a lot of behind the scenes you see um them interacting you see there's a funny clip where they're swapped instruments and they you know baron bombs on bass and <laughs> yeah you know everyone's swapping and i think jacqueline dupre is on violin or something and they're just having huh. fun and you see sort of behind the scenes and it's part of a documentary that they put together but what, what that shows even back then is that people want to see the artists like you said being human being actual people right and, and so I, I think what's 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 you know a great advantage of live streaming is that you're forced to spend a lot more time with your fans and showing them who you are and uh, I think what also that does is as an artist it allows you to know what the, your fans like you know what resonates with them um, did this piece by Chopin or this piece by uh, Fritz Kreisler touch them or was it like oh that's okay and you, then you can experiment with your programming too Oh, yeah. Uh, being able to understand that your audience is huge, absolutely huge. I think that a lot of the success of big uh, streamers, <clears throat> a lot of big success mm -hmm. of uh, YouTubers, they know their audience, they, they know what uh, their audience will like and will not like in a way. And they also are passionate about kind of presenting either they might be playing a certain type of role, maybe they have a certain type of character that they're presenting when they're online or maybe they're just yeah. being themselves and people like that personality as well uh, depending on that they just have this audience that they're cultivating that they're connecting with and they're always interacting with on twitch for example you have the chat and people are always commenting in the chat endlessly like any video you watch where it shows like a streamer you'll see this chat is just going brrr, it's just endless the speed <laughs> and the abundance of communication that you have at your disposal with your audience and the amount of materials you have to respond to as the person who's on stage or <clears throat> you know on the broadcast or whatever uh is absolutely endless and you know the problem with actually on twitch is that you don't have time to respond to every person <laughs> rather than that you don't have enough comments <laughs> yeah. which is uh, completely opposite is a problem <clears throat> you know in a way to what you might expect um just in the in the arts in a lot of time so Absolutely. i think that communication is is so important and <clears throat> i'm really excited to see it more and more uh coming up and to see how that can uh, play a big role in uh, especially like my profession classical music yeah, and it's going to play a bigger role as, 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 as if we're more familiar with the technology that's involved in it. You know, how do we upgrade our microphones, our cameras? And I actually want to play a video you made, uh, if you don't mind introducing it a little bit about it. It was like a basic tech guide on how to put everything together. Can you talk a little bit about it? Uh, yeah, sure. So mm. <clears throat> one of the key things with virtual console halls is to have a easy entry. Uh, you know, there's no like gatekeeping of, oh, you don't have this, you don't have this, please go away and find someone else. No, <laughs> our whole point is to <clears throat> embrace uh, people who have never done uh, uh, streaming. It's the perfect uh, person for us because we get to introduce them uh, to the things that we think are easiest to get into live streaming. So in the video, I kind of uh, <clears throat> explain the show visually show almost like an unboxing type of video, but it's more mm -hmm. of <clears throat> showing you how to set up the kind of stuff that we highly recommend for like starting out in streaming. Uh, like we, we, I show a microphone, I show a webcam and how to plug them and how to set them up so that you can be, you can join us and you can be part of something like what we're doing right now. And you can be a guest or you can be a performer, anything like that. Like. I love that. And uh, I think it makes it very easy for people to see how to plug everything in and it's not that difficult. So shall we have a watch of that video, Ante? Sure. Thank you. Yeah, so this is a freshly bought microphone that mm. I actually recommend specifically. So you get exactly uh, the step by step of it. And what what microphone is this called? Like, what is this? Um... 
Oh no, I don't remember exactly. <clears throat> it might be on our cards later on. The, it was right there, the brand mm -hmm. name, Fifna or something. Mm -hmm. I remembered, but not exactly. So that would be it. Yeah. I don't talk, but I definitely uh, just show everything. Yeah, which is why this is good, because you're reacting onto it. And then you have... Oh, fifth, that's, that, there we go. Fifna. Yeah, Fifna, yeah. Literally $20. Yeah. And you already have the microphone you need. <clears throat> and then yeah, this is and the it's webcam. important to stress that you, you're not really spending a lot of money to get really good quality. Is this the one you're using right now? This Logitech uh, webcam? Oh, no, that's one. not the one I'm using. Mm. Uh, I have used it before and it's worked fine. Oh, that's so satisfying. Yes. <laughs> uh, showing you how how it kind of fits on the screen as well. Yeah, that can be confusing it. for someone mm -hmm. who's never used a webcam before. Attention to detail is just uh, definitely, and uh, basically what a USB, how that'll work. Yeah. Computer or laptop. <clears throat> Get a link to join our uh, stream. Good choice of symphony, by the way. Thank you. <laughs> I even have a green screen behind me, but you don't you don't need that, of course. Oh, you have a green screen. Oh, in that value. shot. Mm -hmm. yeah. So these are, for people watching, these are the StreamYard set for StreamYard settings. So if, when you join the competition or when you use our broadcasting uh, virtual concert halls, uh, you'll be introduced to this studio. And this is everything you'll see. This is everything I see. Yeah, this is exactly mm -hmm. what you'll see. If you are joining anything for virtual concert halls, we use this platform. Very nice. That's 103 okay. minutes and you already know what you're doing. <laughs> <laughs> there's, there's not much else that you need to know, huh? Um, so I want to I wanna talk a little bit about... Um, so we have some cards that uh, we've prepared and we're going to blitz through them um, uh, about what, it, what, what you need. And so you talked about the camera and the microphone in the, in the video, but there's also stuff like the router, internet speed, ethernet cable, which I would love for you to elaborate on, if you don't mind. So could you, uh, Ante, could you share the first slide? Uh, yeah, so this is how we're gonna, we're gonna talk a little bit about how, what technology you need to prepare for the live stream. And I'm gonna ask Phil some questions as we go on. So let's keep going to the next one. Yeah, so um, do you need a very uh, complicated computer or router? What do you recommend to you know, just get yourself live streaming, Fedor? Um, <clears throat> so yeah, definitely you don't need anything expensive, uh, mm. but you definitely don't want to be using anything mobile, uh, like laptop, tablet. Uh, the problem with those things is that they also, not only are they weaker processing, so that means they're less likely to be able to give you the consistency <clears throat> and the quality that you would want. Um, so that it's not like distracting from the, what you're doing on the stream, but also that they have also automatic settings that they will do and that will mess with uh, your ability to get your microphone to work a certain way. One of the biggest struggles actually with uh, <clears throat> streaming for musicians is that uh, we're playing an instrument and the instrument can either blast the microphone for like, one of the <laughs> sim most simplest problems. It yeah. just blasts it and overloads and it just starts to crackle and all those kind of things. And yeah. uh, with mobile devices, it's actually pretty difficult, if not impossible, to adjust the levels of gain on the microphone yeah. that's built into the device. And uh, like, uh, there's just so little customization because it's designed for portability and designed for simple, like, ease of use <clears throat> so it's designed really for conversation like this maybe for conversation like this you could get away with an ipad yeah. but i don't think you could get away with it <clears throat> with performances which is kind of our whole thing with virtual console halls is to host performances that are live and not pre-recorded or anything like that yeah it's important to to um emphasize that a performance a live stream performance is not a zoom call <laughs> or any sort of like chat that you have on skype or anything yeah. it's a it requires a lot more nuances in in technology and 
seeing you and hearing you. So um, with, the, with the next ones, talking about seeing and hearing, we're going to talk about um, uh, the e- e- connecting by Ethernet cable. So you have a very solid uh, connection. And as Fedor uh, introduced to us, you know, the, uh, an external USB streaming microphone and um, and also an external USB webcam. So uh, I think these are essential purchases and I don't think they're actually that expensive. What are your thoughts, Fedor? Like, to get something good like this isn't really that expensive. So I'm pretty sure the microphone that was in the video is about 20 to $25 and plus mm-hmm a few dollars shipping and i think it also comes with prime which a lot of people use have prime nowadays uh, amazon <laughs> prime so if you have that it's free shipping as well within a day so even if it's late last minute you want to join um for mike uh that was for mike uh for webcam i think it's also maybe 30 dollars. so you're looking at like under 60 dollars. i mean if you buy ethernet cable you're not going to go over 100 there's no way you're going to get to triple digits and have like the most basic essentials that will work they won't give you like studio recording setup where you could record and send to a competition and win kind of thing but it will definitely allow you to join us and we will definitely be able to also kind of help tweak things around to it'll just give us enough to be able to uh to to set you up and you could do it absolutely and i want to emphasize like you know this is not just a one hit wonder sort of thing once you buy these equipment you can then do your own live streaming on facebook and one of the prizes that are actually given from virtual concert halls is a kind of a more in-depth um guide to how to do your own live streaming which i think either you or friday um is a part of giving right yeah and then like also like the i'm just thinking about like uh Mm-hmm. Uh, the the shelf life is because uh, you're talking about like oh is this a one t-? shelf life of a webcam is like five plus years at least webcams yeah. never break like unless yeah. you literally throw it across the room or something because <laughs> you're just so yeah. mad at uh, how your face looks I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> or how your person you're talking to looks <laughs> that, that, that can happen <laughs> no but uh yeah webcams have amazing shelf life uh microphones have slightly less so amazing shelf life but just uh, incredible like five plus years on mics and let's say seven plus years on webcams if you just like i mean the webcam is just sitting on your your monitor and that's it um you know uh yeah, and then I think there was also like the Ethernet cable uh, thing uh, that was mentioned. So internet connection is quite important, and depending on location, you might have really bad wireless connection. Uh, yeah. But Ethernet is always going to be an upgrade to whatever your wireless is, because it's a direct line. So there's no like oh walls, because one of the things people don't think about is the walls and the floors. If you're like a floor away from your router, and if there's a wall in between, even the door closed open, like you know, just having any kind of object that's in between your router and your where you're receiving the connection from, uh, is going to m- create fluctuations because that yeah. that signal is going to bounce off the walls. Um, and uh, it's going to be weaker, and it's going to be less consistent. Consistency is really, really important. Um, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't... A lot of people who will say, oh, I have a great internet connection, but if they're connected by Wi-Fi, and like you said, there's a door, or they're upstairs, and the router's downstairs, you just have too many obstacles, and, and the signal can get lost sometimes. So internet cable, I, I have to say, is it's a lifesaver. And you can get really long ones, too. I think I've got, like, a 5 to 10 meter one, and I just I just connect it to anywhere I'm at. I say, I, I need an ethernet cable connection. It just gives me steady... I mean, even if you're not live streaming, but you're, like, watching, watching something on Netflix, or... You're having conversations with people online is just so much smoother oh yeah that's another good point people don't think about this but bandwidth is definitely still a part of uh internet whether it's ethernet or not i mean ethernet connection means it's going to prioritize making sure that there's consistency to whatever's connected wirelessly versus yeah. the ones that are connected wirelessly so not only that but also if your kid is like downloading a show from uh youtube or something uh you know or, or they're just doing some kind of like heavy duty stuff that's going to also um lower the bandwidth that you have for your stream As streaming is definitely the highest bandwidth one of the highest bandwidth uh consistently mm-hmm. things that you can do online that's mm-hmm. why it's so important to buy equipment yeah, and if you're going to invest in doing this, you might as well do something good. So you give yourself the best experience possible. And, the and imagine if talks- you get disconnected while you're giving a performance. Like, how, ter- how, how, how much of a letdown is that? It would like, just be so disappointing like, for everyone and, and yourself and you just feel like, oh, I, I, I don't want to do it again. This is such a horrible experience for me. Um, 
So the next one is uh, about you know testing your connection, and I think that's a quite an important part as well of this whole process. That you do test your connection, that you make sure that uh, you can use one of these sites, or you can even just. <laughs> Google int test your internet connection and you'll find the Google has their own one and it's just important to do that. The next one is actually using um, uh, earbuds versus and headphones versus using speakers. Can you talk a little bit about, you know, you yeah. see a lot of podcasters, they all have headphones on. What is all this about? So something people don't think about as well is that if you're listening to someone when you're talking to them and it's playing through a speaker, what can happen is the microphone that's right next to that speaker could pick up the other person talking to you and then mm -hmm. play that other person's audio that you're hearing through your mic back to them. And so what's going to happen is when I talk, say, if, if, if I wasn't wearing headphones and uh, Chris was talking, it would play that into my mic and then Chris would hear himself back like maybe a second yeah. later. And that's extremely distracting. And you can even hear it on the broadcast as well if you're trying to stream. So the headphones are really important if you have more than one person um, and you're talking yeah extremely important it, does, it can be earbuds you can do bluetooth it really doesn't matter as long as the audio isn't playing through a speaker and it's not audible for the microphone that's ex that's really important mm -hmm. so then you that's that's, that's not another thing you have to invest in but i have to say yeah most people already have their own headphones and earbuds <laughs> it's not it's not like that you have to invest another well, thing but it's important to use like pretty good ones right yeah you'd be surprised there are a lot of people who do come in uh, with us with speakers and mm -hmm. uh, or they use a laptop and they just use everything built in um, You do need earbuds you do at the least if you're going to use a laptop setup and you have everything built in you have a webcam you have a um, You know, then you at least need some kind of earbuds to listen to yep. Yeah that's that's good. I think we've, we're covering quite a lot of them. Um, we're just going to go through them quite the next ones quite quickly um, so making sure you're connected to to, to router, yes, camera to computer. Uh, the next one, which is about where to buy all this, right? Uh, I, oh, like, yeah. like Fedora condenser mics, condenser yeah. mics. That's Amazon definitely has its own a lot story. Of this. Yeah, but uh, that that's something you would definitely. That's like the heavy duty. If you have a condenser mic with a setup, you would you would come to us for like a longer sound check for things. Yeah, I mean, with microphones, you can go on for like for forever on you know increasing your your quality and uh, the st fidelity to your sound, uh, making sure you have yeah, it's all connected to the wall. What else is there? Um, we have ones to talk about. <laughs> We're going live soon. Yeah, so once you have everything prepared, it's it's actually easier for us um, at the virtual console halls to to make sure everything else goes well. And once once it's all set up, then um, you just have to perform, right? Oh yeah. Uh, yeah, and if you do something wrong when you're live and you have everything set up perfectly from, say, me sound checking you or something, Chris will, uh, in his um, uh, soccer goal, uh, goal um, <laughs> referee suit, he will uh, pull out a red card and, <laughs> exactly. and throw it through the camera at your face. <laughs> Absolutely, and it'll, you'll break your webcam in the process. They have to buy a new one, which is uh, another investment you have to make. And uh, then the the last thing I think we showed is the lighting. So lighting is probably the last little thing. Uh, speaking of lighting, my, the sun is coming in. It's making everything look, uh, making me look horrible. So I might have to throw this one in the bin too. Um, so lighting is quite important to get the look. Um, a lot of streamers will use different, different ca lighting sources here and there to to give a depth of field um, in order to kind of enhance the look. You know, you want you want to be quite close up to the camera and to be in focus, but you want there to feel like there's something in the background that's going on. So lighting is quite important, and, and you can invest in these things. Lighting, a ring light, which I have, isn't that expensive. It's about uh, oh. fifty dollars. Yeah, li and lighting can get it can get like. A kind of like, oh, I don't know what to buy. How do I know what to buy? The most important thing is just don't have the lighting pointed at you from the back. Get it pointed yeah. from like your webcams in front of you. Lighting should be not behind like me. It should be in front yeah. of me. Otherwise it'll look like I'm a dark shadowy uh, murderer in some scene and there's, <laughs> you know, and all you can see is just the, the room darkness and that's it. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. <laughs> it'll look creepy instead of uh, you'll see. Yeah, so you want the light from here forward. Mm -hmm. That's the Absolutely. one. Absolutely. 
Right. I think we've covered pretty much everything. And so everybody, um, thank you so much, Fedor, for joining me today. And thank you for being such a wonderful guest. I, time passes really quick fun. when you have good guests. Yeah, thank you. Um, so for everybody else, um, thank you for joining us today. It's been such a pleasure to show you, you know, the tech behind it. We're going to do a part two. We talk about what to do on the day of, of your live stream. And uh, check out our website, soundlessperceivercompetition.com. Uh, you can also check out Fedor's website um, for more information on his teaching studio and what he has going on in his life um, and of course check out our Instagram as well and so thank you everyone for joining thank you for Ante and everybody who's uh, producing the show uh, the Sound of Specifico team and we'll see you uh, next time hopefully Take you'll care. sign up that's when we'll see you <laughs> yeah thank you <laughs> thank you everybody Thanks, see you soon no matter where you are or who you are music connects us all we started with a dream but now we are paving the future Welcome to the Sound Espressiva Global Competition. Fully virtual, yet bringing musicians closer together than ever before, now on a global scale. True live, inclusivity, diversity, connection, community, an extraordinary array of judges. Get noticed by companies all over the world. Prizes, scholarships, performance opportunities. Apply to be a part of the most exciting congregation of artists like nothing you've ever seen before. We guarantee quality and leave no musician behind. We can't wait to hear you on the virtual stage.